All right, hello everyone and welcome to the first digital demo of the spring semester. I'm your host, Salar Mehta, and tonight we will be talking about um, virtual reality and how it can be really used in your workflow for design to sort of enhance the experience overall. We will be going over two programs specifically, Prospect VR by Iris VR and Unreal Engine and sort of how the two can be worked. Um, so I will start off with showing Prospect VR. Um, this is the window that you get. Um, there's two ways of using this. One is with an actual account. You can sign up for a 14-day trial. And if you have a student account email, you can email them for a one-year student's license. Um, also, however, though, if you don't, there is a guest version of it. And since Jefferson themselves do have um, a license for this, you can actually just create a file on the school computers and then just open it up wherever you want as a guest. Um, so when using Prospect, um, you can import from a variety of programs, Rhino, Revit, um, SketchUp as well. They have a plugin. So it's when you have your file all set up, all you have to do is just hit view in VR wherever the plugin saves to, and it will upload it directly to here. After that, all you have to do is hit launch. And after a you know, minute or so, um, it will launch into VR. So as that is happening, I will put on a VR headset and we will go through sort of what you can do. So the really nice thing about Prospect is that it pretty much lets you view your model completely to scale and you can freely navigate it as you please. So right now we have what is referred to as the scale model mode. There's two modes within Prospect, um, the scale model mode and the VR mode. While you're in scale model mode, you can scale it up and down as you please and sort of just lord over the model and do what you wish. While you're in Prospect, you can, when you select objects, you can view basically all the information related to it. Um, any of your layers that you have in Rhino or Revit will show up here, as well as BIM object information if you imported from Revit. You can also hide and unhide objects as you please. Um, extending from that, there's also a snapshot mode, um, which is probably the most useful aspect of this. You can quite literally get into your model and take pictures of whatever views you want. There's also sun information. Um, the sun direction and angle and everything is all based on how you have it set up in the 3D program itself. So you have to make sure you have that correct if you wanna utilize that. Then we have all of our visibility settings, which is essentially just all of your layers within whatever your software is. And you can turn those off as you please. Specific viewpoints, um, you can save your own. So this is one I saved earlier while in the VR mode. Um, but if we go back to scale model mode with this button, the last thing is the section plane. And if we simply hit enable section plane, we now get a convenient clipping plane to view our model in section. Once you get it set up, you can have a very nice plan view of your entire model to look through it entirely. Um, but now, as we're done with that, we'll go into the VR mode. So when you're using it, you can teleport around um, and you'll get this little scale figure. If you do it over the model, you'll immediately go straight into VR mode. Um, there's a few extra functionality that you get in VR mode that you don't get in scale model mode. So while in VR mode, you can no longer make um, section planes. However, you can still take screenshots. And this time you basically get a much more upfront view and you can really frame whatever images you want uh, with relative ease. But the added functionality you get in VR mode is the usage of annotations. So you can kind of freely mark up the entire scene as you need. Um, which makes it really great for just meeting with people and even group settings. You can use this program with a variety of people. Um, I think it supports up to 12 people at most. And with the brushes, there is this current mode that I'm using, which is a projected, which kind of just shoots it like a laser. Um, but then we also have the handheld mode, which allows you to draw it in place. And then other than that, that's about it with Prospect. It's a very convenient program. Um, just for really quickly walking around your models. Um, using this for a review with a professor or a desk crit is a great way to um, 
prove to them sort of like that your model is actually to scale if you have that type of professor that sort of just looks at it and says this isn't to scale. Um, along with the annotations, you can also measure things. So if you really need to drive that point home and it kind of works through free so you can just click and select to anywhere you want and you can even change it to metric if you're about that lifestyle. Um, but that's about it for prospect. Now, as I take this off, I will transition over to Unreal Engine. Um, and once you're done with everything in prospect, um, once you come back to the main menu, uh, you get this whole report where it saves all of your screenshots that you've taken um, and any changes that you made within the program will show up here for usage later on. Now moving into Unreal Engine. Um, Unreal Engine has a bit nicer functionality um, in some ways. Um, so the first thing we'll do is we'll open up this map. Um, Unreal Engine has a basic VR template that you can basically drop into any application that you want. So you could open up your entire model in here and into this map and just hit play. And then you will already have an entire VR level setup that you can walk around through that functions much like prospect um, doesn't have all the nice features, but you can teleport around. So if you're using this for um, rendering purposes, then it's a very great tool to just quickly put your model into VR for a walkthrough. Moving on from that is a fairly special mode in Unreal Engine that becomes a bit more useful. When you have a VR headset plugged in, you get this additional um, VR mode, which basically allows you to run the Unreal Editor in VR as if it were just the normal editor. Um, this allows you to freely modify any elements of the scene as well as place down objects in VR. So once I get the controller on. So navigating around, you can kind of scale the scene freely as you wish to make navigation easier. You do have to like pull yourself around. Uh, but once you sort of get the hang of it, you can do a wide variety of things and easily select objects and move them around. You can freely move them as you please. If you have it selected, you can scale them and rotate them. And everything is just free form using the controllers, which makes it fairly natural. Um, extending off of that, you also have access to basically all of Unreal Engine's tools. Um, the gizmos, if you need to set up scaling or rotating, we got any system information, tools, the various modes. So in here, if you wish, you can even add a landscape to your scene. And after a brief moment of loading, we are able to freely sculpt our landscape around our model. Um, and this is just a very nice way of VR sculpting to kind of craft your landscape as you see fit. Um, Unreal Engine also has a very nice um, vertex painting feature, um, which if you're really getting in deep in the weeds of your rendering, you can very easily, after this loads, just kind of paint materials onto it. Obviously, I'm using just a red color for this demonstration. But once you have the materials set up in Unreal Engine, it is very, very easy to just sort of paint in paths and really bring in realism to your scene. And sort of the last thing I'm going to go over, because um, Unreal Engine is a lot to go into with all of this, um, is using the content browser. And in Unreal Engine, the content browser is essentially where you your file system where you store every single thing that's in the engine. So I can use this if I were to say, come into here and scale this all the way back up. I can access into my content browser and open up this free furniture pack that I have. And we can just scroll through here for some random piece of furniture like this convenient Eames chair. After it loads in, I can now take this chair, scale it up, and I can place it in my scene. 
And this sort of makes a really easy way to freely scale your furniture as much as you wish if you need some giant furniture. Um, and then with that, you can essentially just freeform place furniture wherever you need to and set up your scenes as if you were actually standing in the environment. This also extends to materials as well. Um, under the starter content, if we go there and drop down that menu, you can access the materials and I can just take this stone material and throw it on. And after a few seconds, it'll load in and you can kind of just start hot swapping out all of your materials. And that's basically everything that there really is needed to know for Unreal Engine. Um, if you really want to learn Unreal Engine, um, there's a lot more to learn about it and we can always do more demos and provide more information on it. However, for using VR, it's a very simple just importing in your model. If you already have all the materials set up, they'll all be in there automatically for you. And then after that, it's a very simple just drag and place all of your furniture and you can kind of almost naturally move around everything for very seamless um, editing experience. Um, and other than that, that is all we have for this demo. So thank you very much for tuning in. It has been a pleasure to teach you and share this information with you. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the Digital Demos Instagram at digital underscore demos uh, for any more information or requests on other demos that we can do.